Good evening and welcome to Jeff Davis Yellow Jacket Basketball. We're here tonight. The Jeff Lady Jacket, the opener tonight, taking on the Berrien County Rebels. The Berrien County comes in at eight and four on the season. Jeff Davis is one and nine. And Coach joining me here is Coach Brian Lawson. Coach, welcome to the broadcast. Glad to be here. All right, a uh, first region game for the for the, both teams tonight as we get set to kick off this region schedule. And as we always talk about, that's basically a second season. Exactly. You Going into the season, you have three separate seasons we always talk about in all sports. You have your non-region schedule, which is your first season. Your second season is your region schedule. And then you have your postseason, which is your third. So we tell everybody all the time, you want to win those early games, but it don't really matter until you get into that region schedule. You kind of tell me you don't have to deal with it so much in, in football, but as a coach, you've just had a layoff here right in the middle of your season with the Christmas holiday break. How does that affect your team? Twofold. You could, it could help in the mm -hmm. aspect of you're getting healthy, and you might have had some kids banged up during a non-region because we played a bunch of tough teams, we did. our non-region mm -hmm. schedule, um, that are going to make long runs into the playoffs. Or it's another one where it might, you might be rusty coming out mm -hmm. with not playing as many games. Um, during that Christmas break, but they've been practicing hard, girls and boys, so I'm excited to see what this re our true region schedule is going to do. Katie Beth Rents in her first year here at Jeff Davis has, has really had to build this team from scratch. Uh, graduated a lot of talent last year and, and had to really work with a lot of inexperienced players to try to make a team this year. No doubt, and a couple girls moved off too, mm -hmm. not only graduating some great players, but some of the starters from previous seasons moved off um, been doing a little recruiting the halls <laughs> as you yeah. see some of these girls um, played as freshmen right. early on mm -hmm. and took a year or two off and now they're back um, with Annalise Poole who was a starter at one time for them mm -hmm. early mm -hmm. on took a couple years off and now she's back so you know recruiting the halls and getting your program in place not only finding girls that can do it but also implement what you do as a program you're exactly right we're about set for action here, about three and a half minutes away from tip-off. Right now, we're going to take a timeout and get a two-minute break. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Yellow Jacket Basketball Network. Jeff Davis High School would like to thank the following alumni sponsors for their support of Yellow Jacket Athletics. Sweet Teas, Flowers, Gifts, and Custom Framing, Laney Internal Medicine Group, Lumber City Drugs, Cotton Partners, The Bedroom Store, Hazelhurst Auto, Pig Out Barbecue, Southern Root Salon, Stone's Machine Shop, Comfort Zone Heating and Air, Whitfield Free Love, South Georgia Dentistry, Coleman Tire and Auto, Alt Mulvey Outdoors, Water Service Center, Ragland Timber, Pallet One, McPherson Manufacturing, Renaissance Bank, Family Healthcare Connections, Davis Farm and Garden, Theater of Hazelhurst, Jeff Davis County Farm Bureau, and Bridgeford Church of God. Your eyes are your window to the world around you, and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care, you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're an exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. At Altamaha Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altamahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We're back here on the pregame show. We want to thank our streaming sponsor here for all of our sports here at Jeff Davis High School, the Beasley Group. Without our fine sponsors, Brian, we don't get to do this. We had a great football season. 
and uh, all these sponsors we'll be talking about during the game that you're going to see in the in the in the intervals here we'll go to break tremendous support from our community now we're out working on the spring package to get soccer baseball and our other spring sports in there and again without the support of our community we can't do this no doubt especially a small community like this mm -hmm. being able to bring a game live for free for some for some people that can't make it to the game right that out of town maybe visiting family it's awesome that these sponsors are able to do this for us and also our other sports like soccer me being mm -hmm. a soccer coach as well so be able for them to see that and also baseball season because you know Jeff Davis County loves some baseball. They do love some baseball. I'm looking at Coach Glass posted the schedule. I don't know if I've ever seen a class double A team that has two middle school, two J V teams and a varsity team. No doubt. <laughs> My wife does the graphics for the mm -hmm. baseball program and she was showing me all the games that were on there. I said, Good Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It's it's packed. And but that goes like the community. You got enough kids to be able to do all those things, and it starts from, from the rec department. Josh Schwartz mm -hmm. is doing a great job with numbers in every sport are going mm -hmm. up this year, and That's that shows right. coming through the middle school and up to the high school level. And he's working at building up a basketball program. Mm -hmm. um, and I talked to talked to one of the, the uh, girl coaches in his league here the other day, and and they are uh, they're trying to build it up. They're gonna have two teams. They got to play twelve U and ten U together, but. And, you know, you got to get start to build that thing up somewhere. This is the first time since I've been here that we've had all girls teams right. for basketball. Mm -hmm. And so they're doing a great job getting those kids out there and be ready to play. About ready to tip things off. It's going to be Kelsey Parler in the circle going up against Alina Spruill. We've got Bentley Metz in her first action of the year. She's been working through an energy. Annalise Poole, Claire Stinson. And Jenna Miles, the starting five on the floor for the Yellow Jackets. Three men officiating crew as we have for all games. Tip is up. Battle for a tip underneath. Ooh, and almost Brett a Barron right County comes away with it. And it had a little confusion. Everybody was going the wrong way. And they're going to get a drive and score. That was Alana that Jordan, Jordan Jenkins on the score. Turnover by the Jackets are going the other way. We get a whistle and a foul. And Miles got to move her feet right there on that. The one of the things that that's the Lady Jackets has had problems with is trying to break a play. Sailed by Jenna Miles on the inbound. Gets it ahead to Annalise who pushes it up court. Cross court to Metz. Metz on the drive, and I don't know how it wasn't a foul there, but comes away. Got ball clean. Harlow fighting for the ball underneath, gets it across to Good Poole. Look. Poole, tough look under the basket, too hard off the backboard. You got to finish those underneath. Those are bunnies right there. Berrien County coming the other way, leading 2 nothing. Jacket, leave a man open in lane on defense, and Alicia Pitts puts it through, and it's now 4 nothing. Berrien County. We're just underway here. One way to break this press, got to move the ball real quick, in and out. Got to have good passes. Still by... The, be the Rebels, that ball shot from the free throw line, no good. Fighting for the rebound. They're controlling the boards, a shot up and bought and a foul by the Jackets. Bentley Mitts threw her arm right there on that foul. A little too much contact down low. Second team foul on the Jackets. As Mitts picks up her first. So Spruill will go to the line to shoot a couple. Misses the first one too hard off the back iron. We were talking about the Perez having issues with it earlier. One way is to get a quick turnover, go ahead and push the ball up the court so they can't get set up in it. Ball missed and out of bounds. It belongs to the Yellow Jackets, and Berrien's going to back up into a half-court defense. Miles will run the point for the Lady Jackets. Picked up at half-court. Dribbles near side that under helps. a double team. Gets across the pool. Pools goes inside to Parla. Parla has it knocked away, stolen. Now is that not that jump ball? Finally, we nope. get a whistle of yeah, scrum on the floor. Good things happen when you get on the court. Hustle the plays, get the possession back. Hell ball will go to the Jackets. Inbound under their own basket. Lewis gets it in. Parla driving the lane. Gets it down to Metz too low and out of bounds, and ball goes over to Berrien County. Good ball movement right there on the inbounds. Parlor making a good dribble around the paint, just too hard on the pass. Jenkins with the 
Ball for the Rebels. Drives the length of the floor. Cut off at the baseline by Kelsey Parler. Good defense effort. Forcing it back out. Turned around jumper under the basket. Up and in. Spruill makes it 6 nothing. Nick going to be fouled on the inbound play. And Taylor Cooper will pick up her first foul. 6.07 remaining in the first period. Rebel 6. Jackets nothing. Jackets running a five out offense right here. Nobody inside the three point arc. Lewis has the ball trickle through her hands and Barron County retrieves it but double dribbles and that turnover goes back to the Yellow Jackets. Got to make the first pass right here and then get the ball swung around the point. Ball comes into Poole. Poole drives the lane, dishes it off to Parla. Parla underneath off the backboard and good. Good ball movement right there. Kelsey Parla picks up two. It's six to two. Jacket shows some little full court pressure. Good by Bentley Mitch right there, moving her feet, not collecting the foul. Got to communicate on that high screen. Off the screen there, up and underneath, and Taylor Cooper picks up a couple. Falling asleep on the back door. 8-2. There Jackets we go, get it across court. Simpson down, gets it down low to Metz. Metz retrieves it back to Miles. Miles, a three-point attempt, no good. Shanti Lewis right there, number 30, with a good pass down low. Just got to be able to finish that. Jackets fighting defense in the backcourt. Barron finally gets it across the timeline. Now they're working. Spruill driving lane far side. We get a whistle and a travel. Jumping her feet as she tried to turn around, and the Jackets will take it with 5.05 remaining in the first period and trailing 8-2. to two. Kelsey Parler's working hard down low and caused a couple turnovers and making them have to earn those baskets they're getting down in the paint. Her length is giving them problems right here. Barron in a 1-2-2 one, one, two, two zone defense. Shot by Miles, no good. Follows the shot, gets a rebound. Off the rim, no good. Fighting underneath is Annalise Poole. For the rebound, it's out of bounds off the of pool, and it'll go over to Berrien County. More length coming in right there, subbing out Kelsey Parler. Destiny Ivory in the game. A little half-court man action right here. Rebels walk the ball up the floor. And we get a whistle. And a 10-second violation just took too much time walking. No, no, no pressure. He just, just took the time and lollygagged. Just <laughs> lost track of time right there. And we'll good take it. Absolutely. You got to take advantage of turnovers right here. Got to get some points. And Shante Lewis will end down at midcourt. Fouls on the dribble. Barron stays in that 1-2-2 two, two zone. Works off the screen from Lewis. Ball tips out of bounds. We'll stay with the jacket. Doing a lot of watching right now on offense. Jenna Miles gets mm -hmm. the ball up top. Not a lot of movement. But his man defense got to have some ball strings that are quick with some rolls off of it. Alira Van checks in for Brent Bentley Metz. Ball's inbound to Poole. Poole on the dribble up top. Drives the lane. Tries to dish it off to underneath, but the ball stolen by the Rebels. And here they come pushing it the other way. Under good hustle back by Shante Lewis. Ball underneath will get a whistle and go get a foul called. I believe that's going to be on foul. Destiny Ivory. Yes. She picks up her first. Third team foul for the Jackets. Good defense there. Three point attempt long from the far side and she nails it. Good shot. High arc right there again over Jenna Miles who was contesting the shot. 11 2 now. Rebels with the lead. Miles in a trap. Gets it off to Van. Van across court to Lewis. Lewis gets it to Poole. Poole a fake a little drive at the baseline. Puts up a shot. In and out. No good. Tries to tie her up. Frustration foul right there by Annalise Poole. Had a great dribble drive. A little floater. Looked good from our vantage point. Losing it. Just a little frustration right there. Fouling on the back end. Fourth team foul for the Jackets. 3.43 remaining in the first period. Staying in the half-court man right here. Barry 
working out on the perimeter. Come in, it's all tipped away by Lira Van. And they say it went mm -hmm. off of the Berrien player, so the Jackets are going to get another turnover. We're able to, we're creating some turnovers, and now we've got to cash them in with some points. That's it. We've got to have a little more ball movement, and we got good looks on these shots down low. We just can't finish. Poole gets fouled on the near side with the second team foul for the Rebels, and I believe Cooper picks up her second foul. And there she goes, subbing her out right there, 15 in foul trouble. Elijah Forrest will check in. Jackets inbound near side. Poole has the ball up top. Everybody just, you gotta have like I said, you got to stand there around, but Poole splits the defense. Shot blocks, she controls it. She gets it out to Lewis. Lewis is going to drive the baseline. She puts up a shot too hard over the rim and rebound controlled by the Berrien County Rebels with just under three to play here in the opening period. 14 for Berrien is giving us troubles down low. We're getting some good dribble driving, some looks. High off the glass by Jenkins. He's now has seven in the game. Now timeout on the floor. Let's take a 30-second break. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Basketball Network. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228, download their banking app, or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Jackets on the attack now, 2.37 remaining, trailing 13 to two, Poole has it near side. Looks inside, nothing there, tries to dribble through a double team, manages to control it, gets it back out top to Jenna Miles. We got some more length in here for, for Shanti Lewis. Shanti Lewis too hard off the side of the rim. Latrice Shivers is subbed in for Shanti right here. And Berrien is controlling the boards. We're hitting one shot and done on the offensive end. Gonna get a travel call and another turnover. We need to take advantage right here after that timeout. Number 14, their length down low for Berrien has been subbed out. We need to take advantage of that with our length against two longer players down low now. For Latrice us. Shivers in the game now for the Lady Jackets. She gets the ball near side. She's going to drive the lane into traffic. Ball knocked away by the Rebels and control. We just, sometimes you dribble into too much traffic, it creates a problem. Definitely. Like we're dribble driving. Mm -hmm. There's opportunities there. We got to look for that quick pass to the middle of the paint. A quick bounce pass. Pass inside, shot off the rim, no good. Tied up underneath. Possession arrow pointing towards the Jackets. Destiny Ivory is hanging out around the free throw line on every offensive possession open. We just got to dribble and look for them. They converge on us down there in the paint. And they're going to give the ball to Berrien. A lot of substitutions now for the Lady Rebels. Kelsey Parler back in the game. Jenna Miles is going to step out. Ooh. Going to have a technical foul potentially right here with the uniform malfunction. We got earrings on yeah. a player just subbed in for burying. Yep. So she's going to have to go to the bench. And that's basically a safety issue. Yeah, someone comes down on your ear, rip your earring, your earlobe. Just inadvertently snag that earring. Got to, that's one of them things with a head coach. You got to mm -hmm. make sure you double check before the game just to make sure, not just trust your players. Bearing on the attack, working far side, looking baseline. Stolen in there by Destiny Ivory. Here comes the Jackson Tanley's pool on the dribble across the timeline. Gets a spring from Van, but... Uh, loses her footing, but Kelsey there Parler it picks it up. Poole with a shot from the near side. Good. Good shot. See if we can see that on instant replay there. Great job right there by Kelsey Parler. Mm -hmm. Finding Annalise Poole. She's had a couple good shots. 
just haven't fell for a minute to get her going. We missed the replay there, so let's set it, reset it. Very on the attack, shot's no good, loose underneath. Ball is gonna go to the Jackets, I believe, 13-4 with a minute two left number, in the opening period. Number 22 for Barron on the last two possessions have had two carries that have not been called down low. Mm. She is just palming the ball everywhere. Claire Stinson now in the game for the Lady Jackets. Poole's gonna run the point now. Brings up front, gets is. inside. Destiny Ivory, Ivory up, no good. Rebound underneath by Parler. Parler loses handle and is stolen by Berrien. And Parler harasses a little bit on defense and backs up. Had a collision of the Lady Jackets at midcourt, but everybody's okay. You get the ball down underneath the basket. You don't need to put it back on the court. Just go right back up with it. Take advantage of being right there by the basket. But that's what we said earlier with, with um, Destiny Ivory down low. Look for her. She's there. Ball loose on the floor, picked up by the Rebels. We're going to get a timeout call by Varian with 10 seconds remaining on the shot clock and 23 on the game clock. Let's take a 30-second timeout. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. Back here with 23 seconds remaining here in the first period. <laughs> ben, uh, Berrien leads it 13 to four. And the Rebels will inbound underneath their own basket. Got to have a big 10 seconds right here on defense to get a turnover. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Berrien underneath pushing it back. Shot no good. Missed the rim. Fight for it on the floor. And they reset the shot clock for some reason. But I don't think the ball touched the rim. And it still is not run. Oh. Seven seconds remaining in the Jackets pushing it up. This Shante Lewis on the drive, and she's going to get fouled with four seconds remaining. Great effort down low on the missed shot. Bentley or Bentley Metz mm -hmm. diving out of bounds right there to save the ball, giving us it right here on that turnover. Got four seconds set, left on the clock. Had to set up a quick shot here. Parlor to inbound. It's a turn and shoot to Lewis. Lewis fires no good. It's off the rim. Controlled by Berrien, and that's the end of the first quarter. You score after one. Berrien County 13, Jeff Davis 4. Let's take a 60-second timeout on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you are looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets! lead at 14 to 3 as we go to the second quarter and here to give you the, all the story is coach Brian Lawson to start the second quarter out here you got Shanti Lewis Jenna Miles Kelsey Parler Destiny Ivory and Bentley Metz in here more link down low for us Jenna with the ball up top good hard swing pass to Bentley Metz can't control it same thing, looking down low like we talked about earlier. Got to finish those. Oh, you got to finish right there on the basket. Berrien dribbling down court to our right. Dribble drive from number 10, Euro step. Good finish by Tisby. Tisby picks up her first two of the game. Just beat off the dribble right there. Full court press again. Ball's going to go to the Jackets right there. Again, Berrien coming out to start the period in full court pressure. They did that for the first half of the first period, then dropped back into a half court 
man-to-man -man offense. Chauncey Lewis with the inbounds. Looking for Annalise Poole. She has it up at the wing. Dribble drive. There's a dribble and kick inside. We we have not finished a, bass, a shot in the paint today. Another point blank miss for the Lady Jackets, and that's kind of been one of their problems all year is they just can't finish the shots underneath. And we got, we're having good mm -hmm. looks. They're dribble driving in, dishing it down low. Just the finishing's not there right now for us. We've got a little tie up right there, burying ball down mm -hmm. low. Well, good physical play there by Kelsey Parler though to tie that ball up. She's been giving them issues down low now with her length. Got caught flat footed right there, dribble drive by Barry and rebound offensive. Another offensive rebound and one. Number 14, Spurl with the bucket. She now has four in the game. We'll get a step to the line for the old fashioned three point That's play. It. <laughs> Getting caught on the backside right there. Tell you how old I am. When I played in high school, there wasn't no three point line. <laughs> we barely had electronic clocks. Barry in on the free throw, miss left. Kelsey Parler on the good hustle on the rebound. Ball in Jenna Miles' hand. Annalise Poole with it down low. Trapped in the corner. Good dish to Jenna. Jenna Miles down low gets it ripped out of her hands. Annalise in the right spot at the right time. Kick to Shanti. Good play by Poole to save that one. Finally, Jackets. Crashing the boards, getting a couple second chance shots. Now we got hustle back on defense. Barrier's pushing the court. Put it up. Good offensive rebound by Shanti Lewis right there. Looking up, Kelsey Parler down low. Missed her. Shanti Lewis with the ball at the logo. Dribbling baseline. Shot up a little long. Barrier with the offensive rebound. Rebels lead 17-4 with 6.07 remaining in the second half, a second period, first half. Everybody just fell asleep on defense mm -hmm. right there. 12, Jenkins just dribbled top of the free throw line. Nobody saw her. Airballed it, though, thank goodness. I want to thank some of our game sponsors, Three Rivers Meat Company, Mitch's Pharmacy, Altamont Bank and Trust, and EP American Footwear. Defensive changes are... Substitutions for the Lady Jackets here. Destiny Ivory and Chauncey Lewis off the court. Claire Stinson and Alara Van subbing in. Jenna Miles bringing the ball down the court, out to the wing to Annalise Poole. A little cut from Alara Van. Good look. Number 14 is long down low. Yep, she blocked that one. Van tried to knock it away but was standing out of bounds, and so the turnover goes to the Lady Rebels. Great ball movement with the ball down the paint on the cut. Backside blocks, got to be ready for a dish right there. If you get an over rotation from Berrien, backside's going to be there. 12 from Berrien with the ball at the point. Moving to the right wing, kicking it up top, little motion offense to 10. Berrien with the ball up top, swinging it out wide, the 14. Kelsey Parler. 10 on the shot clock. Great defense by Kelsey down low. Leads to a turnover. Berrien's made a couple shots, but they've been wild shots, dribble driving. They've had one three that looked good that was contested, but for the most part, we've been where we need to be on defense. We just can't find a way to put the ball in the basket right now. Blair Van up top, swinging it to Annalise Poole. She had the right idea. The look was there early. Second guessed herself getting it to Claire Stinson down low on the block. 12 Jenkins running the point for Berrien, bringing it down. Barrying on defense, just collapsing in the zone, not expecting the Jackets to try to shoot from outside. Good job by Jenna Miles there. Yes, J Jenna Miles, and there's 14 again. We must have got some popcorn before <laughs> pregame because our hands are buttery and slippery. Well, they are. Carla Kelsey, gets it blocked. Wild shot from Kelsey right there. Getting frustrated down low. 12 from Barry and pushing the point again. Nobody picks her up. Wild shot off the block. Hands are on her hips on defense right here. We got to find a way to make something happen on offense. Tisby with the basket for Barry. Now she has four in the game. Jenna Miles bringing it down for the Jackets. 19-4, Ru Lady Rebels with the lead. Swing it to Annalise Poole. Flair Van cutting, trying to pull. Swing it to Stinson, back to Jenna, back to Annalise. Good hands right there. 
by 10 from Berrien. There's the kick. That's the shot. Passed it up to clear. Great ball movement. 14, 14 again, again with again. the block. Wow. She, is, she moves well to be have that length that she's got. She's got at least three on the game so far. Blocks down low. Three seconds remaining on the shot clock. Jackson's going to have to get a shot off in a hurry here. Substitution. Bentley meds in for Annalise Poole right there. Good ball movement got into Bentley. Shot needs to come up now. And don't get the shot off. And that's a shot clock violation. Just got to be aware of what's going on with the shot clock now with this year being in effect for mm -hmm. everybody. Got to get used to it. 12 Jenkins bringing the ball down for Berrien County. Jackets going to pick him up man-to-man -man on defense. Bentley getting called in traffic right there on the screen. Ten open with the three in and out. 14 with another rebound. Tie up down low. Possession error going to Jackets way right there. Tell you what, 14 has been a terror on defense for them. She is making it very difficult for us down low. Even out on the wing, she's, like you said earlier, she's sneaky athletic. She can get out there with her length and cause havoc. A little confusion on offense right here. Kelsey Parler with the ball. Bentley Metz dribble drive with a floater. Good. In there for Bentley Metz. It gets her first two of the game. It's 19-6. Good ball movement right there. Leads to a good basket. Number 12, Jenkins running the point still. 33, trying to high screen. Trying to get a post player on the point guard. Stinson Good doing steal. A, Stinson doing a great job on defense, staying in front of the point. Van almost had a steal right there on the wing. Berrien bringing it in. Four teams free down on the three-point line. Down low, 12 got it up top. Going to reset for Berrien right here. We can't go under the screen. You got to come over the top of that right there on defense. Can't give her an easy look. 14 just controlling the boards. Two straight offensive rebounds by 14 with the putback. And one. She has six on the game. We'll step to the line. Claire Stinson being subbed out right there for Latrice Shivers. Another post player. In and out, but finds a way to fall for 14. Jenna Miles bringing it down the court. 12 picking it up high at the top of the point. Blair Van. And again, we have trouble keeping control of the basketball. Dribble drives there. You just got to look near the free throw line. Pitts just muscled that one away from the Jackets. I think that's something at halftime. Coach Rents will do is communicate with her girls. Ten on the putback right there on the finish for Berrien. We'll talk to her girls about dribble driving and looking at the free throw line because her post players are open. We're just trying to go through too much traffic right now. Six on the night for Tisby for Berrien all here in the second period. 24-6. Jenna Miles with the pass to Kelsey Parler dribble down low with the look to Bentley Metz. It was there. Shooting foul, shooting two right here. Latrice Shivers at the line. Taylor Big. Cooper just picked up her third foul of the night. This is Jackets' first free throws of the night. A little short right there from Shivers. And wholesale changes now for the Rebels as they swap out all five at one time here. Hockey line change right there, Bob. Mm -hmm. Get some fresh legs on the court right here. Minute 38 left in this quarter. Try not to have nobody pick up some cheap ones like 14 or 15 just got her third, like you said, right there. Overcorrected a little long on that free throw. Got to get back on defense. Got to win this last minute and a half. Backcourt. And a backcourt violation. Good D right there. Pressure from Jenna Miles forced her to turn and Oh, back across the timeline. 
That'll happen when you make those wholesale changes like that. Mm -hmm. Substitute everybody. You're going to have some not on the same page, maybe not play a lot, used to those pressure situations. Rebels lead it 24-6. Inbounds from Alera Van the Jenna Miles looking to the free throw line to Annalise Goodish. Latrice Shivers with the shot. A little off. Jackets Good get hustle. the turnover. Down low. Good move. Just got to finish those. And a walk. That was good pressure by Jenna Miles that forced her to take that extra step before she put the dribble down. Look, if, if Barian's going to try and get the ball down low on mm -hmm. our misses, we've got to stay on them like that and force those quick turnovers, try and steal some possessions. Inbounds from Shanti Lewis to Jenna Miles. Back to Shanti. Going to get a foul. Foul on number 20. Right there, that is her first foul. Good shot right there from Bentley Metz on the little floater. Jackets cut the lead. It's 24-8. We get moving, a turnover. Moving screen by Berrien, number 54 in the game on Jenna Miles. 50 seconds remaining in the first half. Shanti Lewis with the inbounds. Jackets need to try to score right here. There it is again. Just a little behind Bentley on the <clears throat> pass. A good look there, but just didn't execute the pass. Right there down at the free throw line. It's a good look because when mm -hmm. you put it at the free throw line, defense going to collapse, get the dish out. It's been there for us. Just a little, little behind, a little strong right there. 22 for Barron bringing the ball down. There's a six-second difference from shot clock to play clock. Jenna Miles trying to stay with her down low on the baseline. She's just dribbling around all by herself. 22 throws up a haymaker. We're sleeping on the backside. Good rebound by Jenna Miles. And at least on a fast break, breakaway. 20 with help defense from behind. Jackets regain possession on an inbounds down under their basket, or Barian's basket. Shot clock off, 19 seconds remaining in the half. 32 coming in the game for Barian for 22. Rebels lead it 24-8. Jenna Miles, the kick to Shanti. Shanti dish back to Bentley Metz. Shanti Lewis with a put back a little long. Another offensive rebound by us. We're fighting better under the baskets now. Good, had three different good looks there. Seven seconds left on the game clock. Bentley Metz with the inbounds. Quick dish, Latrice Shivers. She pulls the trigger. Ooh, and foul. Foul, and this could be three from the free throw line. officials are communicating whether or not it's a foul and how it's not a foul. She almost got knocked into the visiting <laughs> bench. I think they may be trying to determine if it's a, if it'll be a three-shot foul or a two-shot foul. But And she's going to get to shoot three with five seconds remaining. Jasmine Williams picks up her first foul. The tree shiver is getting our second look at the free throw line right here. A little short, a little long. Let's see if we can split the difference. Split the difference with it, yep. There it did. is. <laughs> Another one good. She got the range now. Jackets in double figures. Crashed the board right here. Five seconds left on the game clock. Got to pick up defense on a miss. Made all three. 24-11. Full, full, full court man from the Jackets right here. Steals. Quick charge Shanti Lewis. Latrice Shivers puts it back. Oh, oh the roll was not kind. <sighs> that one that, rolled all around the rim. That has been our night so far in the first yeah. half. Well, the pep band's here, and you hear them kick up here. We're at the half. Berrien County 24, Jeff Davis 11. Let's take a two-minute timeout. We'll be back. After this break on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you're looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. 
Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets. Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640, or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology, and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional, state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Dr. Kirkman Syak and his health care professionals at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic care about their patients. The Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic offers prompt health care for acute sicknesses and treatments for a wide range of non-emergency illnesses and injuries. To make an appointment, call 912-375-4884 or visit them at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets and God bless from Dr. Kurt Munsiak and his team at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. We're at the half. Berrien County leads it 24 to 11 over the Lady Jackets as we're opening up region play tonight against the Berrien County Rebels. Joining me now here at halftime is boys coach Will Johnson. Coach, uh, uh, Brian and I talked a little bit during the, uh, during the first half. You've had a couple weeks off with the, with the holidays and all. How does that affect your team as you get ready to start things up here in the region schedule? We well, you know first off it's great to be back. <laughs> right. long, long layoff. Um, but, you know, we, we got a lot of good work in, uh, you know, practiced a ton. You know, mm -hmm. I think this is the first time I've ever haven't played a game over Christmas. Right. And it's, it's kind of what we needed um, just to get more reps in, get more practice, and uh, get ready for this stretch of region play. Opening tonight with Berrien County, uh, their team that, that's, you know, tech traditionally a tough team but uh, they're off to kind of a slow start um your guys have been fighting hard in just about every game so far so uh, uh we got to learn learn how to finish these things up yes you know that's that's what we've been trying to fix is figuring out how to finish games mm -hmm. um but you know Barian, very long very athletic um play hard play aggressive man-to-man -man defense so we're gonna have to be really good in our sets um, you know, not really get caught into their game. I want you to speed you up, and and with you know with their pressure, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be going to be important for us to handle the ball and uh, have have good possessions. You know, we need to make this a possession game and uh, make sure we take care of them. One of the one of the advantages of having that long break is is the guys that have these little nagging bumps and bruises get a chance to get healthy yes. and, and get back to full speed. Yes, you know, it was good for Latrell Sellers. He's been nursing a little ankle injury. Uh, J.J., our point guard, mm -hmm. had had a few ankle wrists, something like that. So glad that, you know, we got through the break healthy. Um, it was very beneficial for us. So now um, just hoping all the work paid off. I, I know we got about a 1,000 shots up over <laughs> Christmas break. So, That's great. So maybe, uh, maybe a few will start falling tonight. Heading into this region schedule, uh, Couple of couple of teams that are traditionally strong. You got Dodge County. You got Sumter County. Tell us a little bit about the region and what we can look forward to. Well, you know how it's shaking out right now. Um, Sumter and Dodge, mm -hmm. uh, obviously at the top right now. Uh, Sumter's played a lot of AAA, 4A schools and, and competed very well. Mm -hmm. um, and then you know after Dodge and Sumter, it's anybody's ball game. Right. And and not saying that Dodge and Sumter are anything that we can't go get. It's mm -hmm. just I think a lot of with this region with how it's all stacked. It's going to come down to pretty much January, February basketball of who's playing the best at the right time. And so, you know, maybe those those close ones that we didn't get in December, maybe mm -hmm. they'll kind of fall our way this month. A young team and, and trying to, to rebuild a program, how – impactful would it be if, if you get to be one of those four teams to, to go into the playoffs? It's huge. Anytime you can get a chance to go, you know, that's you're dancing. You know, mm -hmm. anybody's got a chance. And, uh, you know, tonight's huge. Uh, it's like I told the guys, we got Dodge County tomorrow. Uh, get this one today. Worry about this one. And, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Maybe we can reel off a few. In region, you got to defend the home court. Definitely. And uh, try to steal a one or two on the road. So uh, tonight, a big game against Berrien County. And 
and we're looking forward to, to a good game tonight. Yes, sir. You know, we're, we've been looking forward to it. It's like I told the guys, like you just said, you know, it, it's it's tough to win at home, but it's it's even harder to win on the road. So right. you got to take care of home, uh, home court advantage for sure. So got the band here tonight. Oh, man, that's good. Happy to have them and uh, got, a, got a good crowd coming in. So hopefully we'll get it done. Coach, thank you for coming and talking with us. Good luck tonight. Yes, sir. Go Jackets. Go Jackets. Coach Will Johnson of the Jeff Davis Boys basketball team is they'll be taking on the Berrien County Boys team here in the nightcap tonight. Uh, here at the half, the Berrien County Lady Rebels leading the Lady Jackets by a score of 24-11. to 11. We'll take another two-minute timeout. We'll be back after that break for two minutes here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts, where parts arrive daily, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at their location at 118 Ottawa Hall Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets. Make the switch to Mitch for all your over-the-counter and prescription medicine needs. Take advantage of their drive-up window, curbside, and delivery services. The health of you and your family is their priority. Make the switch to Mitch, located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst. Monday through Friday from 9 to 6 and 9 to noon on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784. And make sure to follow them on Facebook. Make the switch to Mitch, not only for your prescription needs, but also for your gift needs. Visit Designs and More by Brandy, located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop Designs and More by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone, shoes by Corky, and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders from Memorial Designs to remember your loved ones. They can create one-of-a-kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. We're back here at the half, Berrien County leading at 24 to uh, 11. Here, the Lady Jackets making a pretty good run there in the uh, second quarter, Brian, to, to close the gap some and try to work their way back in this ball game. Definitely. We uh, we were down 13 to 4 at the end mm -hmm. of the first, and then the point differential for the last one, we only lost the second quarter by four points as compared to nine from the first quarter, and we had way more chances mm -hmm. that quarter down low, and we were battling more underneath the underneath the uh, the basket on deep on offense, about the same as we were on defense. A couple crazy shots from Berrien mm -hmm. early in the early in both quarters is giving them a little bit of the lead right here. But we have opportunities; we just got to execute it. We missed a ton of shots, point blank range, and that's. If those shots start falling here in the second half, we can make a big run. And the only way to make the shot is you got to keep shooting. That's so it. You got to keep getting warm. The looks are there. Hopefully, Coach Wrench right here talked to her girls about. You saw the little the uh, adjustment in the middle of the second with mm -hmm. the cut down low for us. Got to look for the back door on a short, quick pass. Also dishing it to the free throw line and then kicking it out quick. Um, Jenna Miles and Annalise Poole, Sh uh, Shanti Lewis are sharpshooters. They can shoot from outside the arc. And once you get that going, when you take the shot, I think we've only taken probably two threes this whole game. Yeah, Defense mm -hmm. will expand out where you can then work down low. They have packed in tight in the zone and dare just to drive the lane. So we're going to have to try to take a little more, if not the threes, at least a little longer range shots and try to pull that zone defense out of the paint. I'll tell you this, 14 is not out by the mm -hmm. three-point line. So 14 for Berrien has been a nightmare for us on defense right here. So maybe – we can get something started at the beginning of this third quarter. Barron will get the ball on the possession hour to start the second half. Our, our original starting five from the first quarter is out there to start on defense down on our end. Brian, Lu Brian Lawson, not Lewis, <laughs> Lawson's going to take you here through the third quarter. All right, Barron with the inbound right here. Jenkins, number 12, been running a point for Barron most of this game. 
slowing it down up top. 33 trying to expand the defense at the free throw line. Jack can switch up to a zone defense here to start the second half. A little, a little high 2-1-2. Two, two. Which, good rebound. 14's there, but good tie up. And Our ball right there on the possession arrow. So with the 2-1-2, two, two, it's more of a, you're going to let shooters shoot, so mm -hmm. we're going to give up some of them outside shots to keep the paint control. That will help probably with that offensive rebounding that we were getting beat on on the defensive side earlier with some putbacks. Jenna Miles running the point, swinging out to the right, the Bentley Mets. Drilling through, picked her dribble up. Had it stolen away. Turnover right there by Bentley. Barron with the ball pushing it down. Number 10, Tisby. Kicking it back to 12 to Jenkins, swinging it out to the wing. 15 Ooh. on the three. Cooper. She has five on the night. Full court, one, two, two by Berrien right here. Trying to high trap, which you can't do. You've got to work the ball in on a full court to get them to tighten down and then kick it out. 10 with a three, long, 15 with a rebound, kicking it back to Jenkins at the point. Swinging to the 10, Berrien dribble drive into the paint. Cross court pass to 15, back to the three point to Jenkins. Jenkins, 12, buries the three. Great ball movement by Berrien right there. She has 10 in the game, and a steal by Barron on the inbound. Lazy inbounds pass from Shanti Lewis, but Barron can't capitalize two missed shots, but they get the offensive rebound. 12 kicking it down low to the corner. 10 long off the back of the backboard. Maybe the shot clock as well. 32-11, <laughs> Lady Rebels have stretched the lead here. We got away with one right there on the turnover. We're about to give it away again. Nope. Oh, he confusing. hadn't busted the ball in play. Thank goodness. Shanti with the inbounds and Jenna Miles just pushing it up court. They move back to a half court man right here. Varian has. Kicking it out to the right to Shanti. Kelsey Parlett at the free. There's the kick we talked about. That's the look. Hey, with good hustle to get the board underneath. Yeah, good kick to Kelsey Parler. 14's there with the SWAT. Kelsey puts it up. Can't get it to finish. Barry in 33 with the rebound. 12 Jenkins dribbling down court. 14's open down low. Got to get back on defense right there. 14 with the putback. They're back in the full court. One, looks like a 1-3-1. One, one. There's a look back door. There's the pass. Good cut. Good cut by Bentley Metz right there. Good eyes by Annalise Poole to stop that full court, setting up, get the ball in quick, push it down court where they can't get stationary to be able to trap you. Bentley Metz going to get two right here at the free throw line. Her first trip today. Spruill picks up her first foul. And we need to keep attacking 14 to get her in foul trouble here late. Bentley Metz with the make. One more from the free throw line. Shot is up. Off the backboard bank. They all count no matter how you yeah, get Yeah, that's them. right. Mets has six in the game. Full court man from these Lady Jackets. Jenkins trying to bring it down court for him. Back to the point. Shanti switched off on her now. Rebels lead at 32-13. 5-20 remaining in the third period. We got out of the 2-1-2. Two, a two. couple threes got rained, and Coach Rents decided to get back out of it, go back to a man defense. 14 up top on Shanti. Shanti with a wild pass. We'll get a foul. Foul by number 12. Jenkins right there. A little push from behind on Kelsey Parler. We just got to be smarter with the ball. Second team foul for Barry in here. Shanti with the inbounds. Jenna, Jenna going to run the point. 12's picking her up higher than normal. There's the look. Pull the three. Good rebound by Annalise. Pull down low to Kelsey Parler. Kelsey Parler cannot buy a basket today. She, she, just, is, she rushed that one a little bit. And she's taking another half second and gathered herself a little bit. I think she makes that shot, but it just kind of rushed it. Shanti with the shot, put it up. Kelsey Parler again. With the putback offensive rebound, nothing. Shanti Lewis with another offensive rebound. Varian steals it coming down court. Varian almost lost right there, 14. Back out to Jenkins. 
moving screen from 33. She tried to shield Jenkins right there on the dribble baseline. Got caught with it. Number 33, Alicia Pitts, mm -hmm. first foul. Alira Van checks in for Shanti Lewis. Inbounds to Jenna Miles, bringing it up court. Like a 1 2 2 on defense, like a loose man from Berrien. Bentley Metz down in the corner. Didn't like what she saw, kicked it back out to Jenna. Back to Jenna. Dribble baseline. Pass to Kelsey Parlor. She loses it. Turnover jackets. Berrien's ball in the inbounds. I believe Jenna Miles mm -hmm. has only taken one shot this game. A spot shooter that she is, trying to get something set up for her on the offensive side to pull it. Jenkins bringing the ball down court again for the Rebels. Jacket staying the man-to-man, -man and we get a travel. Travels to try the little Euro step like she did earlier in the game and got called for it this time. Alira Van kind of darted in on her and forced her to take that extra step. Turnover by the Rebels. Jenna Miles bringing it down court for us. Kelsey Parler set up on the free throw line. Back to Van, back to Miles. Bentley Metz on the wing. Gets it stolen, just taken from her right there. Berrien bringing ball down court. Jenkins. Sproul and Cooper have been the two on defense that have controlled the game for the Rebels. Their length is just giving us problems all over the court. 12 just lowering her head right there, just trying to get a call. Got to move her feet on defense. She goes to the free throw line. Jenna Miles picks up her second personal. Shooting two. Jenkins makes the first one. 33-13. Rebels with the big lead with 324 remaining in the third period. A little long on the second. We had the ball on the rebound and gave it away. Driver pressuring the high up top on the point. Swinging it down low, three. Boy, she buried that one. Tian Tisby with the three. Again contested from Jenna Miles. Nine on the night for Tisby. Jenna Miles bringing it down, kicking it out to Alira Van. Kelsey Parler with the ball, dishing down the shivers. Once again, 14 mm -hmm, on the block. block. <laughs> 12 bringing it down court. Gets the put back right there. Lazy defense getting out. The stopper from dribble driving. Easy put back. She leads the Rebels with 13 mm -hmm. here in the contest. They Jenna, stretch the lead. Jenna Miles kicking it to Van right there. Looking for some kind of movement. Turnover by the Jackets. Jenkins bringing it down, puts it up again. And gets a and, roll. And one. Graham is friendly for Berrien right now, but has been cold-hearted against the Jackets tonight. Foul right there. I believe on Annalise Poole, yes. Yep. She makes the free throw for the old-fashioned three-point play. We got to settle right here on offense. This one-two-two is giving us troubles. Nobody's cutting into the paint, running a five outlook. Jenna Miles running the point. Screen from Van. There it is, Poole. That Poole free on the other side. Yep. A little long. Offensive rebound from 14. Larry Van with a turnover on an errant pass from the Rebels. Kicking down to Latrice Shivers in the corner. Foul on 14. Sproul of the Rebels. Picked up her second foul of the night. Shivers bringing the ball in the inbounds. Out to Van. Kick to pull, pull with the shot. A little off right there on the mid range. Kelsey Parler to hustle trying to save the ball from going out. She steps on the line. Turnover jackets. Minute 40 remaining in the third. Rebels Bear. lead at 40 to 13. 
this quarter's gotten out of hand a little bit right mm -hmm. here. We went with two points this quarter. Just got to settle in on offense. Berrien trying to slow the game down with the lead. Backdoor screen and cut. Good ball movement from Barry in the 10. We got a defender that falls contested by Kelsey Parler. Again, 14. Sproul just massive under the basket. It was contested. We're there. Mm -hmm. She's just stronger being able to put it back. Jenna Miles kicks it to Annalise Poole. Dribble drive. Pass down low to Kelsey Parler. Going after 14. She blocks it again. At least her fifth block on the night. Under a minute to play in the third. Jenkins from Barron bringing the ball down the point. We let her dribble drive down low. She throws up an Aaron shot right there. Hustles and gets her own rebound. She pulls the three. Good from the corner. Lara Van with the inbounds to Jenna Miles bringing it up court. Jenkins with 19 in the, toward the end of the third period tonight. We're trying to go around under these high screens mm -hmm. they're putting on us instead of attacking it, and they're just getting open looks. Bearing with Euro step from 10. Nice little put back right there from 10 with a quick Euro step. She's got 11 shot clock off with 14 to play. 47-13 is Berrien has pushed the lead. Jenna Miles running it still in this loose 1-2-2, two, two, loose man look. Into the third. Into the third, 47-13. Berrien with the big lead. Let's take a 60-second timeout here in the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Williams Brothers Trucking is now hiring qualified CDL Class A licensed drivers with at least two years over-the-road tractor-trailer experience. Williams Brothers Trucking has an excellent benefits package. They have quarterly bonuses. They have great insurance. They offer flexibility as far as your work schedule. Um, you're not really pressured into starting at any certain time throughout the day. Be home every day with family-owned and operated Williams Brothers Trucking. Apply now online. Go Jackets! Your eyes are your window to the world around you, and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care, you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. Back here, going to the fourth quarter, 47-13 Berrien County with the lead as uh, they had a big, big third quarter and straight to lead out. Barron will inbound at midcourt here to start this final six minutes of play. Got outscored in that third, 23 to two. Pass, stretched, stretched it out for him. Pass loose on the floor. Going to have a travel called on Barron County. The Jackets will get a turnover here to start the final period of play here. Still an early possession right there. The hustle on defense. Jenna Miles will Bats the ball into the front court. Puts off a screen on the far side. Tries to drive baseline. Pulls it back out. Comes back off another screen by Van. Has it knocked away by Barry. And Barry on the breakaway. Lays it up and in. And I don't have a number 20 on my score sheet. But she made two points there. 49-13. Trying, trying, trying to high screen right there. Yep. Every time to the right from Malira Van. And nobody's helping on the backside ball movement. They're just working by themselves. Miles will pick up the foul on the, by Berrien County. So Jackets will inbound. Poole trying to find her, gets it to Shivers at the free throw line off the front of the iron. Good look right there at the free throw line. Just got to put it, put it away. Okay, that was Destiny Ivory with the shot. Jackets fall back in a man-to-man -man defense. Berrien trying to drive that. Stolen away by Poole. Working it up court. Need to look up right here. Jackets have the numbers. Poole continuing to drive. Has it knocked away in the paint. And going to get a double dribble call. Had three on one right there. Mm -hmm. You had Jenna Miles to the right, Destiny Ivory to the left, and at least Poole taking it. But we didn't space out. We all kind of grouped up and allowed the one for Berrien to basically guard all three. Yep. If you can guard three <laughs> with one, it's going to be a hard night. 
30-point lead for the Rebels. Varian trying a bunch of low, bunch of low strings. Three-point shot, no good. Rebound underneath. It's going to go over to the Jackets out of bounds. With 436 remaining. Bentley Metz, Shanti Lewis checking into the game. Shanti Lewis subbing in a little spot shooter for us. She's taking some good looks. Just got to find it. Lewis is going to run the point. It loses the dribble out of bounds, but saves it. Last minute, picked up by Metz. Metz has it stolen away. Hustles back on defense. And Shanti Lewis good. hustling back also steals the intercepts the pass and pushes it the other way. Going right. Now we're going to get a contact foul. And I think that kind of bails out is Shanti about a, a little bit out of, out of control right there, but she really hustled down the court with the ball. Georgia Robinette picks up her second foul. Poole has it knocked away inside on the floor. Kelsey Parler picks it up. Cross court, loose ball, but retrieved by Bentley Metz. And we, she's going to get fouled. We don't have 20 on our roster, but yeah. <laughs> she she must be a young kid. She is everywhere <laughs> right now. She's got a couple knockaways, a couple steals. Her hands are really quick, causing us issues up top. She's been a late sub for him in this game. Lewis will inbound on the far side. Gets it into Shante Lewis. Lewis shot. No, I'm checked that to Destiny Ivory. Shot is off the rim. Stolen by Poole, but a foul. And Annalise Poole picks up her third. That was close right there. Could have went both ways for mm -hmm. us. Thought we might have had possession on the steal and a foul from them from below, but the ball goes to the Rebels. 49-13, bearing with the lead. 350 remaining in the ball game, and we get a whistle Moving away screen. from the ball. Moving screen from 20. Again, she picks up her fourth foul. She is, hasn't been in long, but, boy, she is piled up fouls. That's quick. probably why she's all over the place stealing the ball. She's picking up fouls as she's stealing it. Oh, she almost about to try and pick a pocket there on the inbounds. I didn't, I didn't couldn't run around the court like she does, but I could pick up a foul. I could get so in a hurry. <laughs> no doubt. Get another foul on the Rebels. Foul on 24 right there. Robinette will pick up her third. Ooh, Bentley Metz up top. Metz works far side. Versus back up. Under pressure, gets it off to Poole. Poole inside to Destiny Ivory at the foul line. No good. Rebound by Shante Lewis underneath. Her shot is no good. And the Rebels will control the rebound with 325 remaining in the ball game. That's the right look at the free throw line. Rebels Wide push open. it up hard. Williams running the point now. Gets it off a loose ball on the far side. Picked up by the Rebels. Three-point attempt by Williams. No good. Another three-pointer on the way. That's short. And going to be out of bounds. Will belong to the Yellow Jackets with 3.05 remaining in the ball game. 24 has been in for a minute and a half, and she's taken three three-pointers already. She is going to make use <laughs> of the limited time that she is on the court. Boys game to follow here. 3.05 remaining in this one. As Lewis walks the ball up the court. 20 up top lurking. High screen kicked out right there by Barry and stays with the Jackets. Next broadcast will be on Tuesday as the Worth County Rams come in, and Coach Lawson will have the lead call on that one on Tuesday. Cannot wait. Get my feet wet today. Mm -hmm. Who you got working with you? I think Coach Ray. All right. Connor Ray. Connor Ray. An alumni yep. football, baseball program, working with both as a coach right now will be with me. I think I have roped him into doing it. Ball tied up inside the possession arrow. Favors buried in the – that got a little physical. The player hit the floor hard. And the stripes had to step in right quick to kind of calm things down. But Barron will inbound on the baseline with 247 remaining. We're down big, but you can see by that play that the girl's still playing hard. No doubt. Our fighting, fighting for that loose ball. Our effort's been there on defense. <laughs> it's been good on offense. We just can't find a way to make a basket right now. Looks have been good. They've been executing everything but finishing. 
Barron works it inside, back out, three-point attempt on the way. Banks it off the glass by Robinette. She, she's one for four, <laughs> but she got hers that time. She got it that time, 223 remaining as the Jackets clear the midcourt. Beautiful Lewis. Thomas making her first sub in for tonight for the Jackets. Lewis loses a dribble, and, and we're going to get a foul right there. She just slammed the girl to the ground in frustration, and I think she's going to have to exit the game. That was a just a frustrating, a foul out of frustration, and she's going to have to cool down a little bit as Claire Stinson in, enters the game, and they're going to get a technical foul. I missed that one. I was following the ball, happened behind <laughs> the ball. Looks like we're going to have some free throws on a flagrant. Like you said, Jim, just mm -hmm. a frustrating situation. Mm -hmm. It hasn't gone the way you want it to go, but you got to hold your emotions in because this ain't the only game of the season. You're going to see them again. Makes the two. Forrest with the two free throws. 54-13. And Barron will get the ball. And they're going to push it up quick. They're caught sleeping a little bit on defense. And the pass goes wide and out of bounds. It belongs to the Yellow Jackets with 2.09 remaining. Patrice Shivers running the point. Drives down the far side. Pulls it back at the baseline. Now she's in trouble in the corner. Gets it off to Poole. Poole drop step inside. Good. The tree, Annalise Poole picks up a couple. It's been her shot all night and ain't fell for. Finally has. Long court, cross court pass down low. Long three pointer on the way short. But Forrest hustling gets a rebound. Kicks it back out. Another long three pointer. This time Shivers controls the rebound and she's in, in trouble. Dribbles it off a foot but controls it and gets knocked out of bounds, and that foul will send the ball back to the Jackets with a minute 33 Latrice, remaining in the ball Latrice game. Latrice had great effort getting the ball down mm -hmm. last possession, but drilled it right to the corner and picked her dribble up. She trapped herself with the baseline. Jackets are in the bonus, so Latrice Shivers will get to shoot the one and one. Three of five on the night. She made all three on the foul on the three-pointer earlier. Nails the first one, nothing but net on that one. She's got four in the game. She'll get the bonus now. 54-16. Kelsey Parley tried to sneak on the back door out there on the rebound. See if she tries to go in front of this time and fake it. In and out, rebound. Lost out of bounds by the Rebels, but they're going to give it back to Berrien. Good effort by Stinson right there contesting that ball. Late subs coming in. Looks like Robertson, Anahi. I can't see the other one. Bearing on the attack in the front court. Driving the lane. A runner put up in a foul against the Lady Jackets. Late. 121 remaining. Late whistle. That ball had already been mm -hmm. hit the ground and rolling before the whistle blew. Stepping to the line. Barron will shoot a couple here. She don't waste no, no time taking it. She did. Second one on the way, and it's good. Forrest has four points in the game. All have come from the charity strike. Jackets push the ball up quickly. Bad pass stolen by the Rebels on the drive up top. Quick stop. No good. Bearing controls the rebound. 63 seconds remaining in the game. Bearing continues to work the ball in. Up top. Driving the lane. Runner. Way wide out of bounds. Was blocked by the Jackets. It'll belong to the Rebels. Good under job. a minute to play. Good job by Durden right there sticking with her in her hip. Trying to get it, gets it in underneath. Shot from the front, off the front of the iron. Hustle rebound there by Forrest. She launches one up, gets the roll, no good. Again, Forrest hustling to corral the loose ball. 
Kyle Durden out there on defense, making it hard for him. High off the glass, no good. And, and out that. of bounds and will belong to the Jackets. A lot of second chances right mm -hmm. there with some young kids in for mm -hmm. us. Shot clock off with 30 seconds remaining. Jackets going to fall to 1 and 10 on the year. Barron will prove to 8 and a 9 and 4, but most importantly, they pick up a big region win. Stolen by the Rebels as they run the fast break. Going to be foul from behind. Hard foul right there from beautiful Thomas. Prevented the easy layup. Make her earn it. 14 seconds from behind. She'll have to step to the line and make a couple. We're going to take a break here between games before the boys' action goes, and then we'll be back after the completion of this game. We'll be back with the boys' game following the break between the two games. And the Berrien Rebels have picked up a big win here against the Lady Jackets tonight. Ball loose on the floor, controlled by Forrest, and she's going to get called with a travel with 11 seconds left. I love the effort from these young girls mm -hmm. that are in here late. They're not just letting things happen. They're trying to force everything they do, trying to show something to Coach Rents. Shot from the corner. Beautiful Thomas, no good. Hustles and gets keeps the ball live underneath, and there's your ball game. Your final score is Bering County 56, Jeff Davis 16 as the pet band kicks in. We're going to take a break here. Two-minute timeout here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're an exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the Meat Professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. At Altamaha Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altamahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228. Download their banking app or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group.
About to get ready with boys action coming up here shortly. Barron County coming in at five and seven on the season. Jeff Davis one and nine. And but that that record a little deceiving, Coach Lawson, is they have been a lot of very close games that the Jackets just could not close it out. There's been a lot of games we've been, yes, closing mm -hmm. out. We've been winning late mm -hmm. in a lot of them and just find a way to collapse. But like we talked about during the pregame, the girls game, yep. there's three seasons. non region stuff's out of the way. Find a way to execute in your second season right here in region play. And if you look at the scores of these two teams on who they played, we've actually probably scored more points in our games than Berrien mm -hmm. has, even though the records are different. Boys, action about to come up. We're going to take a two-minute timeout, get some words from our sponsors. We'll be back with more on the pregame show. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all Jeff Davis County sports. If you're looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets! Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640, or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology, and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional, state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, Call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. About to get underway with the boys' action tonight here. Jeff Davis taking on Barron County, first game in Region 2 AA. And just noticing before, this, uh, during the warm-ups, Coach, uh, Coach Johnson mighty sharp over there in that navy blue suit with the navy and gold striped tie. Looking like Calipari yep. over there on the sidelines. <laughs> Region play. Got to look your best. Mm -hmm. So the jackets will be in white. The Rebels in red. As we come out to get started here in the second half, have Amari Jackson, Malachi Smith, Bobby Jones, J.J. Benjamin, and I believe Jaquan Adams. Yes, sir. Starting five for the jackets. Jackson will <clears throat> jump it up at center against Tay Lias. Tip control by the Jackets. Benjamin on the point up top. Jackets work at far side. Man to man defense for the Rebels. Driving the lane, tipped off, and no good on the rebound on the far side. Good turnover. The turnover by the Jackets. Get it right back. Shot up off the rim, no good. 4v2 right there. J.J. Might Benjamin, a little too strong off the rim, and the Rebels control it back the other way. Might have been better to pull it out right there. Thought about a three, but kicks it back up top. K.J. Jackson now gets it inside, back out top. Three-pointer on the way from the far side, no good. Rebound stolen in there by Jackson. Cannot get out rebounded tonight, especially offensive rebounds. Inside, ball kicked out of bounds and belongs to the Yellow Jackets. Just underway here. 
in game two tonight, the boys contest. Last possession down the court, Malachi Smith wide open in the corner when J.J. Dribble drove right there, dishing it to Bobby. Be looking for that again down here. They lost track of him in this, looks like a high man, 1-3-1 one, one defense right here. J.J. gets it to Bobby. Bobby double team on the far side, cuts it down to the foul line to Adams. Adams and a double team, boy, varying really quick on this man-to-man -man double team. Three-pointer on the way from the far side. Off the bank and good. Malachi Smith with a bank three. Jackets have the early lead, 3 nothing. Barry now on the attack up top. Jackets playing a 1-2-2 two, two zone, I believe. Long three-point attempt, no good. Underneath, tied up. And the Jackets, good defense. Bobby Jones tying the ball up underneath. The ball will stay with Barry and on the possession arrow. But that's just good hustle by Bobby underneath. We talked in the girls game, the zone defense is mm -hmm. going to be susceptible to threes right there, and we got to get out quicker. Three-point attempt by the Rebels, no good. They get the rebound, reset the offense. Three-pointer from the corner, no good. This time Bobby Jones on the rebound, pushing it up full quickly. Had a man up front. Pass was kicked away. Bobby Jones controls it, but he throws it away, and here comes Aaron Barry pass. going the other way. Backhanded layup too hard off the glass, and Jaquan Adams gets a rebound, got a man wide open down court. Benjamin puts it through, and good. Jackets lead 5-0. Barry was looking for some contact on the layup right there. Great job by Malachi Smith laying off to get the rebound. Ooh, Ball travel. underneath will get a travel. Took too many steps inside. Getting out athleted a little bit underneath mm -hmm. the boards on offense. Getting out jump some. And I don't have 32 on the roster that was sent to me, so we'll just call him by his number tonight. Working the far side, three-pointer from Jaquan Adams. Good. Let's Mal see that on this to replay. Malachi Smith on the three Malachi. right there. Malachi. Back-to-back -back back threes for him. Jackets with a big lead up big here in the early going, 8 nothing. Said it after first possession. He was open down in the corner down here near us. He's been open twice, corner Jackets, up top. Jackets steal it, get possession. But lose it on a bad pass. It comes to Barry in the other way. Driving lane, turn around, but fouled on the layup attempt, and they'll send Barry into the line. We caught the replay of Malachi's three-pointer. Bobby Jones with two turnovers early for the Jackets being lazy on some passes right there. Otis White steps to the line. Gets the first one to go. Bobby Jones picked up his first foul. 5.05 remaining in the opening period. Barron on the board. Got to crash the board right here. Makes them both. It's 8-2. to two. Full court pressure from the Rebels. J.J. working up top. Circles lane, drives through, has the ball knocked away out of bounds and stay with Jeff Davis. Good quick move by J.J. to get around the circle and Penetrate the lane. High man out the inbounds right here. Benjamin gets it to Jones. Jones back to JJ. JJ underneath, up, no good. Tipped in by Amari, Amari Jackson. 10 2 now, the Jackets with the big lead. Great putback right there, jumping over 32 to tip it in. Pass inside by Barron, jumper from just inside the foul line, too hard off the back rim, and the Jackets control the loose ball, and we're going to get a double dribble call against the Jackets. The top turnover will go back to Barron County under the under their own basket with 428 to play, and the Jackets have gotten off to a fast start here, Brian. They're finding they're finding looks down low. Still on the breakaway is Benjamin. He lays it up and in, and let's see if we can see that on instant replay. One way to beat a high press is to get out quick. Dribble drive. You see the drive and the layup. Barry now in top. Ball inside, knocked away. Jackets control it. Playing good, tough defense inside. 12-2, Jackets with a 10-point lead early. High man defense right here, trying to stop those threes that we had in the corner earlier. Jones gets it to J.J. J.J. back. J.J. with a three off the rim. No good. Rebound by Berrien. 4v1 on the boards right there. We're bailing out after the three. 
Driving in the lane, drop step, no good, but good drop back defense by the Jackets. They collapsed in the lane and took the ball away. Stolen in the backcourt by White. White turnaround jumper, no good. Coming out of there with the rebound is J.J. Benjamin. Gets it down court. Jaquan Adams. Great job waits. right there by Jaquan Adams. Real, real patient to let the guy go by and then shoot the, shoot the layup. 14-2, a timeout on the floor. 30-second break. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Dr. Kirkman Syak and his health care professionals at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic care about their patients. The Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic offers prompt health care for acute sicknesses and treatments for a wide range of non-emergency illnesses and injuries. To make an appointment, call 912-375-4884 or visit them at 22 Cross Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets and God bless from Dr. Kirk Munsiak and his team at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic. Two jackets, 320 remaining in the opening period. Berrien having to take a timeout right there just to calm their team down, stop the bleeding. Long three from the corner, no good. Rebound by Bobby Jones. Jackets kind of slow it down. We'll let them, let them take them all day. Driving the lane from full court, J.J. Benjamin rolled up and tapped in by Amari Jackson following it up and tipping it in. He's got four. What a way to crash the boards right there by Amari. 16-2, the Jackets with the lead. Long three-pointer from the corner. And we get a foul underneath. As against Barron County, it'll go to the Jackets as Jaden Richardson picks up the foul. That's what happens when you do a good job down low, boxing out, mm -hmm. getting a little aggressive on the offensive boards for Barron, taking an errant shot out wide. Jones with the dribble up top. Leaves it for Benjamin. Check that. That's Malachi Smith. Jones drives the lane, pulls it back out. Trying to run a little motion offense right here, set some high screens. Trying to get somebody loose. Pulls it back out. Jaquan driving. Step. Good. Jaquan Adams now with four points. Ball movement right there, contested early. J.J.'s doing a great job of dribble driving, getting the defense claps on him and finding people out wide. 16-point lead for the Jackets. Can't fall asleep on. remaining in the first. Can't fall asleep on defense right here with a big lead. Got to win this possession, too. Barrion working it around the perimeter. Tries to cut her inside. Stolen by the Jackets. Here Barrion. comes Bobby Jones the other way. Barrion's having trouble with her 1-2-2 two, two right here in yep. the half court. J.J. on the dribble up top, gets it back to Jones. Jones works the far side, passes inside to Amari. Amari loses the handle, and Barron will take it the other way. A minute 44 remaining. Opening period, been a good quarter for the Jackets. Drive the lane. Under the traffic, puts a shot up and picks up a foul as three Jackets collapsed on him as he drove the lane. And we'll have to see which one they call with the foul as the defense was there to collapse. With that one, two, two, there's going to be open little running lanes down there, and mm -hmm. he took advantage of it. We just collapsed. We've been really aggressive on the defensive side, and those things are going to happen. Bobby Jones picks up his second foul, and that's going to that's going to hurt. One thing that's hurt Bobby this year is mm -hmm. foul trouble early. He's right. the he's the energy of this team. Riley he will step to the line. This is the first. And only two points for. Bearing so far have come off of free throws. And Trail Sellers in for the Jackets. Going with a more athletic lineup right here. You get your size out with Amari. Makes a second. 18-3. Jackets push it up top. Little Conaway with the ball. Gets it back up top to J.J. J.J. Under pressure up top, kicks it far side. Three-pointer, long on the way, off the rim, no good. And Barron County is going to let it go out of bounds, and he'll take the ball with a minute 18 remaining. But well, that's fine. That's a good little pass right there out wide. It's been mm -hmm. open the whole night. Take that shot. He's made two of them so far. He had a good look, just a little strong off the back iron. Jackets show half-court zone here, trying to trap. 
Berrien tries to push it down court, driving underneath, rebound by the Jacket, so they lose it back underneath, put back underneath there by Zach Davis. 18-5 the score, Jackets push the ball up court. Man-to-man -man defense by Berrien. J.J. drives the lane, has the ball blocked and taken away by the Rebels under a minute to play here in the opening period. Rebels pushing it the other way. Inside, cutter in the lane, kicks it back out. Three-pointer from the far side, no good. Long rebound control by the Rebels. Dishing underneath in the foul as Josiah Davis picks up the foul underneath. I seem to remember that name from somewhere. Yeah, he's a pretty good athlete. Saw him all during football season. Kick returner for him. Malachi Smith picks up his first foul. He ran a couple back against us. First one by Davis is ending good. Well, see, we weren't the only ones he ran them back against. No, I think he broke the state record this year on kick returns for touchdowns. I think he had eight total. Makes them both. 18-7. Jackets push it up. 30 seconds remaining. And we get a whistle and a foul. Foul on 23. 23. I don't have him either, so. Inbound pass tipped away. Go out of bounds. Will stay, I believe, with the Jackets. 23 seconds remaining. Now the shot clock is off. Jackets up by 11. And J.J. Benjamin takes it deep in the backcourt. Under pressure, gets a, picks up a foul. Quick cut step and got a reach in foul on Otis White. Coach Johnson's got this group in right now just to save mm -hmm. that starting group so we don't get no cheap fouls late with a big lead. This crew just needs to hold on to it right here for us. We'll get a whistle before the inbounds. Off ball foul. The official's going to have a conference here. It looked like zero with the mm -hmm. moving, like, a little aggressive right there on J.J. We're not going to call anything. I don't think they call anything. They just kind of settle things down. Jackets to inbound at midcourt. It's an awkward spot right here for an inbounds right in front of the table. Get it in, though. Driving the lane, and we're going to get a – Rival call with 14 seconds remaining. Jackets up by 11. Good opening period for the Yellow Jackets here in this first region game. Big 10 seconds right here. Don't give up nothing cheap. Eight footer shot from the far side. They're going to call a travel before the shot. And with four seconds left, the Jackets will get the inbound under the burying basket. Oh, stolen. He did, thought about it, looked back, took the shot in the quarter ends. Thank goodness right there. We were a little out of sync on that inbound play. That's the end of one. Jeff Davis, 18, Bering County, 7. Let's take a 60-second timeout. This is a Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Need salvage parts for your new or late model car or truck? Then you should call McCarty Auto Parts, where parts arrive daily, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, at their location at 118 Ottawa Hall Road in Hazelhurst. Check out their inventory online 24-7 at McCartyAuto.com. If they don't have the parts you need, they'll find it. Call McCarty Auto Parts in Hazelhurst for all your salvage part needs. 1-800-329-7258. Go Jackets. Make the switch to Mitch for all your over-the-counter and prescription medicine needs. Take advantage of their drive-up window, curbside, and delivery services. The health of you and your family is their priority. Make the switch to Mitch, located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, Monday through Friday from 9 to 6 and 9 to noon on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and make sure to follow them on Facebook. Jackets lead at 18 to 7 and here to take you through the middle two quarters, Coach Brian Lawson. Inbounds right here. Mm -hmm. Quick. That violation. Had a foot violation on the line, I guess. Eagle eye right there by this official down by us. Turnover right there. 
what it goes down in the whole stat column. Berrien swinging up top to Davis out wide to the wing. Back up a little, just trying to get the trying to get a look out of the zone defense. Yeah, because they're gonna good job on the board. They lose that loose ball though. A lot of traffic underneath, blocked from behind. Amari Jackson right there with a good block. He's played great tonight. He's been a menace on the boards with two putbacks early in the game. J.J. bringing the ball down, kick it out to Little Earl. Little Ooh. Earl with a three. See if we can see that on the instant replay from Conaway. That drill drive and that dish down low has been there all night for J.J. Barry bringing the ball down. Pick the dribble up. Nice three-pointer there by Little Earl Conaway. Two looking inside, free throw line. Great defense from the backside. Little Earl being able to poke it out. Jackets lead it 21-7 early here in the second period. Malachi Smith getting about to J.J. running the point. Little Earl. Good dish right there. Lamonte Deeds. What a go. Oh. Mari Jackson with a putback. Should have had Hustle. it right there. Wow. But Amari Jackson saving his own miss, getting to J.J. right there on the drive. Gave his two points away to J.J. on that one. J.J. with six in the game. Makes it 23-7. Two burying with the ball. They're just trying to move the ball around up top to get us out of position in this zone to try and get a look. We're doing a great job of rotating, poking the ball out right there. Stays with Berrien in the corner. 15 and 20. Subbing in for Berrien. Inbounds play. Mid-range in the paint for Berrien. Dish it up for the three short. Offensive rebound by Berrien. Kicks it out. They reset up top. Berrien's now trying to get the ball inside of our zone, but Amari Jackson with his length is just being, giving them issues. Big rebound by Lamonte Deeds there. J.J. running point for us, bringing it down. Out to the corner of the Deeds. Get an offensive foul uh, on a moving screen there. That's a little ticky-tack for me, but foul is a foul. Conway picks it up. Good 20, ball movement. 23-7, Jackets with the lead here with 543 remaining in the first half. Barron being a little more fast-paced with their offense being down here. Bringing the ball in way quicker, forcing some shots. We're doing a great job inside. We just got to get these rebounds. Floater in the lane by Berrien. Mari Jackson with the rebound. Malachi Smith bringing it up, slowing it down. Berrien picking us up at half court now, man. Down to JJ and on the wing, trying to feed Amari down low. Tie up. No late signal for Berrien right there. He did a good job to hustle. He knocked the ball back and off of Amari as he stepped out of bounds. Berrien pushing it now. Still in our 1 2 2. Getting it up top, swinging it to the wing. Little Earl with a steal. Monte on the. Uh, too tall. That's the right look. Just a little yep. high on the pass. Good job by Lamonte being there after the, the takeaway. We got to get back on defense, though, because Barron's going to push it up quick. 450 remaining in the half. Jackets continue to lead 23 7. Cross court pass for the three. Great job by Lamonte boxing out right there. I don't know who the. They I call think the they're going to get Lamonte on the foul on the arm. Tough call there. Both going up for the rebound at the same time. I don't know how you call that a shooting foul. Caught him hitting on the arm as he was going for the putback. Bearing in number 20 on the make. His first free throw of the night. We've got 444 remaining here in the first half. We've got a size advantage down low. This one is a miss. Balls up, long, bounced two or three times off the rim and finds a way. Now it's a full court man from Berrien. We break it early, Lamonte in the middle. Gets it back to J.J. 
half court man look for him. Ball to Amari Jackson up top. Kicks it to Earl. Earl running the point, running the offense. Good job right here by the Jackets moving the ball. Stolen. Lamonte was there. Good contest right there from Malachi, but the putback by Berrien. A timeout by the Jackets. Let's take 30 seconds here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Make the switch to Mitch, not only for your prescription needs, but also for your gift needs. Visit Designs and More by Brandy, located inside Mitch's Pharmacy. Brandy offers all occasion flowers, silk, and fresh. Shop Designs and More by Brandy for gift baskets for that special someone, shoes by Corky, and jacket t-shirts for the entire family. Located at 5 East Coffee Street in Hazelhurst, open 9 to 6 Monday through Friday and 9 to 12 on Saturday. Give them a call at 912-699-3784 and follow them on Facebook. 412 remaining here in the first half. Jack is leading at 23 to 11. Good job by Coach Johnson right there calling a timeout. We're a little discombobulated, some on offense and defense, just mm -hmm. settling them in. We're still winning this quarter, five to four though in the points. So anytime you outscore them every quarter, you can't lose. So come out of the timeout, looks like the same group on the field, on the court, field, <laughs> football in me. Little Earl gonna take it out. Looks like full court man from Barry. And you gotta have some sketchy inbounds pass, picking up her dribble. Got it to Malachi Smith, down to JJ. The full court's broke. JJ with the dribble drive. Great look from JJ, he's got to finish. Just a little too hard off the back rim. Barron did a great job of tossing it off of JJ right there, get possession. Barron bring it down the court, still with a little up-tempo about him. High trap, they break it, great job by us. Lamonte Deeds on the court. Gives Still away, not a great job, don't. Good hustle Good. by Deeds. That is the correct pass from J.J. Mm -hmm. Malachi Smith was not continuing his run though. He spotted up, a little off sorts right there. J.J. saw what he was gonna do. He just held up. That's been Malachi's spot today though from that wing. We retain possession though. Little Earl with an inbounds to Amari. Gets out jumped by one. He loses the ball. Out of control from Berrien right there, back to the Jackets. 3.39 in the half, 23 to 11. Jackets with a 12 point lead. Bobby Jones has been absent this quarter. Coach trying to be smart with fouls, but looking a little sloppy on the offensive side. Put back right there by Berrien, number 10. Jack Davis now has six in the game. Foul, looks like from number 15 over by the bench. Tomorrow, Riley will get the call. Bobby, as soon as I say it, Bobby Jones subs into the game with the inbounds. Get a little more tempo and pace about us. Malachi dribbles into a trap. Saves it, though. Amari with the ball. Back to Monte. Back up to the top. Settling down. Ah. 15 picking up two quick ones right there. And that one way up top of, above the key. They're trying to be very aggressive on defense to win the ball out of this man look. High man, like you said, Jim. 3-0-9 remaining in the first half. Jackets lead it by 10. Helps with his high man. You get a senior like Bobby Jones that's played a little bit of mm -hmm. basketball that knows what's going on, that can control it. Gets it out to J.J. High wings from the Jackets to try and stop that trap. And Bobby one-on-one. -on -one. Kicks it to J.J. from the corner. Wow. In there. Big three, J.J. Benjamin. Pick up that on instant replay. There you go, you see pass down in the corner. Corner's been there. Varian gets offensive rebound, shot goes off the side of the backboard, kick it to the corner. Good hands from Lamonte Deeds on the dribble drive. Two loses it, but retains possession. 26-13. Jackets up by 13. Great hands from Bobby Jones and right there. And what a play. Great effort on the steal and the save. And then bounced it off the Berrien player's leg. To get the turnover. High man right here from Berrien. 
A little ping pong action with the ball. And it's going to go back to Barry and on that. I think the, no, the Jackets going to retain possession. You're going to set up an offense, a little inbound. Nope. Nope, back Oops. to Barry. Yep. It did go to Barry, and I thought it kind of kicked back off Bobby Jones. Barry into the wing with the dribble drive. Amari's length and presence inside is just. Affected that shot. No doubt. Wild pass. Barry is trying everything they can to get inside of our 1 2 2 <laughs> zone and get it out wide, but we have, for once this year, we actually have more length than somebody on the court, and we're causing them fits. Malachi bringing it down, holding it up. Jackets up by 13 with 2.12 in the half. JJ running the point. Amari trying to give a high screen. We're running a high motion offense right here. Good look. Go up with Amari. Foul. Gets mugged under the basket. Great, Hard foul. Great job, Bobby Jones, getting the ball out to Monte for the dribble drive and looking. Barry and trying to trap high again out of, out of rotation. That extra pass on that, on that possession results in the Jackets getting to the free throw line. Amari with the free throw. Hmm. Hmm. Just rolled off the edge. Soft roll. Two minutes remain in the half. Crash the boards right here. A little long. And free this, throw shooting has been an issue with our team this year. Me and Coach Johnson talked about it a bunch. We have lost some games late because mm -hmm. of that. Still in the one, two, two, giving them fits. We'll let Barry and take shots from outside all day. Amari Jackson uh, with the again block. affecting the shot. Great job by Amari inside. They're going to try and trap Malachi in the corner, get it to Bobby. Bobby with the jumper. They get a hand on it. Good rebound from Monte. Amari Jackson with his length inside, causing issues. Bobby pulls the three, a little off rebound from 10 from Barry, and they bring it up court, pushing a little quick tempo. Jack has got three good looks at possession, but couldn't close the deal. Dribble drive in with the dish. Doing a great job of rotating on defense. Big Ooh, three big there three by from, Josiah Davis. That's a good, I mean, that's a good defensive stand for us right there. That's Ten point good, lead for the Jackets with under a minute to play. It's a better shot. Good look. Amari again with the putback. Misses it. Bobby has to clean it up for him on the offensive rebound. Jackets by 12. Just about a couple of seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Corner, dish it to the wing, dribble drive. They have thrown up some crazy haymakers from inside the paint. Amari, John, Amari is just getting them to throw wild shots up and not be able to take a good look at the basket. 20 two, seconds remaining. Two great jobs on different possessions from Monte running the court. The cut, one was a little over his head. That one's a little in front of him, but he's where he needs to be. Berrien gets the turnover, bringing it down court. Shot clock is off. We're in a high 2-2-1 two, two, press right here. Almost Mont a steal. Latrell, the freshman Latrell, uh, Latrell Sellers does a great job. 1v2 right there. Hey, give the foul. But make him have to earn it from the free throw line. Josiah Davis will step to the line. Two for two tonight from the line. Makes the, makes the first one. Got, got a friendly roll there. Got to do a good job on the boards right here. You got eight seconds left in the second. Get a quick transition basket. Makes the second one. 28-18. Hard foul. Going for the ball. I don't know how a whole second runs off the clock <laughs> on that, but. Quick on the trigger. Seven seconds left. Quick inbounds. Great job. By the Jackets. Put back the trail sellers. Nice movement by the Jackets. Great that, job. And that will close out the half. At the half, Jeff Davis 30, Berrien County 18. Let's take a two-minute timeout here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Silas Worth Monument Company offers factory direct orders from Memorial Designs to remember your loved ones. 
They can create one-of-a-kind computer designs or traditional monuments. You can choose your remembrance in beautiful granite, marble, bronze, or cremation monuments. Call Victor Worth and his staff today at 912-375-4587 or visit their location at 353 Alma Highway in Hazelhurst. Also visit them online at silasworthmonument.com. Williams Brothers Trucking is now hiring qualified CDL Class A licensed drivers with at least two years over the road tractor trailer experience. Williams Brothers Trucking has an excellent benefits package. They have quarterly bonuses. They have great insurance. They offer flexibility as far as your work schedule. Um, you're not really pressured into starting at any certain time throughout the day. Be home every day with family owned and operated Williams Brothers Trucking. Apply now online. Go Jackets! Your eyes are your window to the world around you and good vision is important to everyone. At Southern Eye Care you can count on their expertise in treating all types of vision problems to help you see your best. From glasses to contact lenses, from surgical vision correction to treatment of eye disease and injury, their team is here to help take care of your eyes. Your vision matters at Southern Eye Care in Hazelhurst. Call them for an appointment at 912-375-2516 or visit them online at southerneyecarepc.com. Make tailgating easy and delicious with help from Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Three Rivers Meat Company offers specialty cuts of beef, pork, chicken, and seafood. They also have several types of the in-house made fresh sausage. If you need a grill, they're an exclusive dealer for Traeger Grills in Hazelhurst. To place your order in advance, call 912-551-9621 or visit their beautiful meat counter at 90 West Coffee Street. Go Jackets from Derek Wooten and the meat professionals at Three Rivers Meat Company in Hazelhurst. Jackets lead it 30 to 18 here at the half, and we're going to let you listen in to the Jacket Pet Band here at the halftime of the boys' game.
Been listening in to the Yellow Jacket, the Pride of the Pinelands pep band here at the half. And, boy, Coach, they do a really great job. No doubt. It's good to have them here, mm -hmm. um, as many as they can get in these games. Uh, they're also going to try and make it. I talked to Mr. Jimmy Oliver about trying to come to a soccer game or two this year. If you ever watch soccer on TV, they always have a bunch of guys out in the, right. in the bleachers with the band going. So it gives a little bit home court advantage to have a band in here also with you. You're getting about to get soccer season kicked off. Tell us a little bit about prospects this year. It looks pretty good. We've, we've had a few kids come out this year that has not played for us in the past and some new faces. Mm -hmm. um, last year was a little struggle for us. We were really young. We played probably five freshman starters with some sophomores that haven't been in the fire against the, probably the toughest soccer region in AA, which was Vidalia Toons right. and those guys. Um, looking at it this season, this region's going to be tough. Fitzgerald's always a good contender. They're going to have some athletes from Worth, but Gael Valora, Jose Luis Mendoza, mm -hmm. Josue Avila, uh, DJ Riles, some guys that played for us last year that were young kids are going to be coming back. Um, I feel pretty good about this season um, on the boys' side, definitely. All right. Well, we'll be kicking off that. We'll have coverage of all the home games with soccer this year and our spring sports package as well as baseball and some tennis and track and some other things that are coming on here during the spring. So uh, if you're interested in being a part of our broadcast, uh, just let us know and we'll certainly get you in touch with someone that can set you up with a sponsor package here for our spring sports package here at Jeff Davis High School. All the, all the, all the dollars paid into that program stays right here in the Jeff Davis Athletic Program. That's something that's new this year that is great for mm -hmm. all of our sports. stays in-house. It doesn't go anywhere else. Any money that is given comes directly to making this happen for y'all and also to these athletes. And we love to see different faces of sponsors, especially on the soccer side. We have a huge Hispanic community mm -hmm. in this county that are huge in all these sports. They're at every basketball game, baseball game, football game supporting. We love to see some of the businesses within the Hispanic community also sponsor and support these kids during soccer season as well because this money goes to them, not just football, not just baseball, but also our soccer players. So you can reach out to Roger Metz here at the school or to me and we'll get you in touch with the person to get you hooked up with a sponsorship for our spring sports package. we at the half. Jeff Davis leads it 30 to 18. We're going to take a 60 second timeout. This is Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. At Altima Hall Bank & Trust, we strive to help you live your best life. That means offering loans for nearly any dream or goal. With competitive rates, local processing, and quick decisions, we can customize a loan to fit your needs. This is Misty Boatwright, Relationship Manager at the Hazelhurst Branch. Come see me today at 57 North Tallahassee Street or visit our website at altimahall.bank. And let's work together to achieve your financial goals. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Bank of Hazelhurst is Jeff Davis County's only locally owned and operated bank, serving their friends and family since 1906. They offer a wide array of services, including personal, commercial, and electronic banking services, along with mortgage and ag lending. For more information on the services they offer, call them at 912-375-4228, download their banking app, or contact them online at bankofhazelhurst.com. The Bank of Hazelhurst. When others have their branches, they have their roots. you all about it? Coach Brian Lawson. Uh, Lamonte Deed starting the second half for Jaquan Adams, a different start lineup for him. Lamonte dribble drive down low with a foul. That a way to attack the basket there early and get them in foul trouble. Lamonte will go to the line. Foul on number 10 for Berrien. Picks up his first foul. Lamonte with the make. Shooting a second right here. Yep. Makes the second one as well. 50% on the night yeah. on free throws. Two for four. Record this season for the Jackets. Barry and bringing the ball down. We well, have had struggles at the free throw line all season long. Maybe this Christmas break, they did a lot of extra free throw shooting practice. We're in a 2-3. Or a high 3-2 zone right here. We're out of that 1-2-2 two, two we were in 
Oh, they got a guy snuck, snuck in the back door and caught us off guard there. Bad shot by Barry and gets bailed out by an offensive rebound, a putback. Bobby Jones brings it down, gets his JJ at the point. Dribble drive by JJ, gets it knocked out of his hands. Stays with the Jackets, 23 on the shot clock. Jackets lead it 32 to 20. Bobby Jones with the inbounds to Malachi Smith. Little Aaron on the shot, rebound by Barry and push it down. They have a man down court. They miss him, Bobby. Does a great job of not causing a foul right there on the breakaway. Again, Amari Jackson getting down, influencing the shot. Bobby with the keep looks down to Monte with the putback. Good assist from Bobby Jones. Good vision getting to Lamonte Deeds for the two. 34-20, Jackets push the lead back to 14. Barry and bringing the ball down, zero running the point. They're trying to run a true zone-like offense with a guy at the free throw line. Go side, Davis inside. Finally gets a shot over Amari Jackson right there. It was contested, tough shot. J.J. winning a one-on-one -on -one battle with the dish to Amari. Big basket. Amari with a little contested shot right there. Back down. 36-22, the Jackets with the 14-point lead. Back in the 1-2-2 two, two on defense right here that gave them troubles at the beginning of the game. Varian with the long three, in and out. Good rebound by Monte. J.J. with the ball, running down the point, getting it to Bobby. Bobby Jones controlling the offense, getting it to J.J. Benjamin. Malachi Smith kick to Bobby. Bobby with the three. Boom! Nothing but net from Bobby Jones. Let's see that three on instant replay from Bobby Jones. Great ball movement up top to get him the dish for the wide open look. See the pure shot. Nothing but net. What Bobby's going to do when he makes it is let you know he made it also. <laughs> Good contested shot right there from Malachi Smith. Varian finds a way to keep it three from the point. A little short. Another offensive rebound. Bobby Jones with the good hands. Great job throwing it off the defender right there. And then skipping the rope to keep the ball from bouncing back to him. Showing his athleticism. Bobby with the inbounds. Going to probably try and get to J.J. right here on the kick. Nope, they're setting up a play. 39-22, Jackets with a big lead. 5-17 remaining. Getting it down to Amari on the inbounds. Trying a little handoff play. Barry and snuffs it out. Malachi, good effort on the court, loses the ball. JJ, contested layup. 10, able to make it off the glass. It makes it 39 24 with 5.03, a timeout on the floor. 16, a 30 second break. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Since their founding in 1968, the Beasley Group has become a vertically integrated leader in the forest products industry, and this growth has made them the largest hardwood sawmill in the United States and North America's foremost producer of crane mats and timbers for the energy transmission, utility, and construction industries. The Beasley Group is proud to be members of the Hazelhurst and Jeff Davis County community. They are also proud supporters of all Jeff Davis High School sports. Go Jackets from the Beasley Group. Jackets with the lead and the basketball. Bobby Jones with the ball on the inbounds under Berrien's basket. Great effort by Berrien to try and steal, but we retain it. Errant pass from Bobby Jones. His fourth turnover of the night. Berrien with the three from the wing. In there for number 12 for three. Late rotation from the Jackets. J.J. bring the ball down. 37-27, a nice floater there. Great screen from J Amari Jackson up high for the floater. J.J.'s got 12 <laughs> on the night. Got to rotate on defense. Long shot, stepped on it. 41-27, Jackets with the lead, 425. That zone defense, I'll be talking in the girls' game. You're going to give up those mm -hmm. shots. you got to rotate. We're doing a great job of contesting every shot they make or every shot they take. Bobby Jones with the inbounds gets it to J.J. High man full court defense from Barry and the Rebels right here. Good hands from 23, but J.J. retains it. Kicks it to the wing. Malachi 
Looks down low. Can't finish. Bearing with the rebound, one with the look, gets it to 23 down low. Can't control it, good hands from Bobby Jones to knock it out. Bearing retains it though. Dribble drive from one. Calling the blocking foul on Malachi Smith. One looking for contact right there in the lane. Yep. Got exactly what he wanted. Second personal on Malachi. But making him earn it. Good on the first free throw. Bearing for the second. Made it. Barron is 11 for 12 on free throws tonight. Davis with somewhat 11 keeping points. Them, somewhat trying to keep them mm -hmm. in it right here late. J.J. trying to do everything down low. Gets rewarded for it, though. Gets the foul on the shot on the blocking call. On number 12. Elias picks up his first. J.J. to the line. To the line his first free throws of the night. Soft roll over the front of the rim, makes it. 13 in the game for J.J., the freshman. I tell you what, he's come a long way at the point guard as a freshman here. No doubt. You can definitely trust him right here as the season goes on. He makes the second one to control the ball and make things happen. He can create his own shot and also create others. 43-29. Barron with the ball down low, kicking it out to the wing, thinking about the three, takes it. Calling it hitting a wire turnover. 3.30 remaining in the third period. Jeff Davis with the ball. Bobby Jones with the inbounds of J.J. J.J. 1v3 gets the foul call. I believe Otis White's going to pick up the call. Should be his second. Third like, team foul on me. Like you said, with J.J. being able to control the point, mm -hmm. he's able to do things like that and create lanes to cause fouls on the defense. Stuck in the corner, gets it out to Bobby. Bobby Jones, isolation with the kick, a little Earl, a little Earl for the three. Just short. Offensive rebound, balls ping-ponged around. J.J. ends up with it. Good hustle by the Jackets on the boards. Reset the offense right here, get the Bobby up at the point. High screen. They call it off. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Laurel with the ball. Turnover. Dunk from number one. Davis has 13 for the Rebels now. Turnover from Little Earl leads to two. JJ getting the ball down to Jaquan Adams for the putback. It's twice tonight. Jaquan's got the ball down low and made a move to create some space for himself. He's got seven in the game. Jackets lead at 45-31. Barron with the ball up top. Contested three. 23's length in the game right here is causing us issues. He's a late sub for him in the second half. Again, second, he gets the board. Second offensive rebound by 23. Put back. We are getting beat up on the offensive boards. That's five on this one possession for another three. Great job by Bobby taking control of it. Looks like a foul from Barry in right there on the reach in. Gonna get 12, Ty Lias on the call, his second personal. Four team fouls now for Barry in. Doing a lot of jumping on the boards mm -hmm. down here instead of boxing out. Nobody wanting to put a body on anybody. We're just trying to out jump and we're getting a little out athleted by the lineup we have on the court. Under two minutes to play here in the third. Bobby bringing down the wing, dribble driving. And travels. Drug the back foot as he tried to pull up. Jumping in a full court right here. 2-1-2. Two, two, two. Puts him out in the middle of the stop. There's a little entry passes. Jaquan 
late on the trap. Berrien breaks it, gets it to two. Turn. Turn. Oh, backcourt back right court, there. Over and back. Good hustle there. By, by, by the Jackets, but there was really no need to, to make that attempt as the ball was going to go over to him on the over and back. Almost made an issue right there, giving the ball back to him on the head. Like I love low. the effort, but got to be smart with it. Malachi running the point for us. Little Earl down low, errant pass. But picked up. Malachi with the ball. Gets it to Bobby on the wing. Off to Little Earl, Little Earl dribbling with the ball at the point, kicks it to Malachi. Amari up top. Good ball movement from the Jackets right here in this possession, taking a lot of the shot clock. Still with it. Little Earl for three. Oh! In and out off the backboard and goes in. Second three of the night for Little Earl Conaway. He's got six. We get out of the full court, back to the one-two-two half court right here, the quarter court. Jackets which up by 17. It's been very effective for us this game. That's why right there, great job by the Jackets on the turnover. Malachi Smith, Barron's trying to put a guy in the middle to disrupt it instead of dribble drive, and they just can't get the ball to him. We just dis we are disrupting every pass into the lane. Great defensive plan from Coach Johnson so far on the night in that quarter court one-two-two. He's giving them fits. We got to get back on defense, Barry and pushing it. Great job by Malachi Smith stopping the three. The link from Amari causes the Aaron shot again. He doesn't have a, very many blocks, but he has affected about two dozen shots. Bobby trying to take a shot late in the clock. Probably that's, Amari Jackson's best defense of the night. That's of the, the end of the third. Jackets 48, Rebels 31. Let's take a 60 second break. This is the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. CNH Creative Flooring can make your floors beautiful. They are this area's foremost experts when it comes to concrete grinding, polishing, crack repair, and epoxy coatings. They offer hundreds of color epoxy flake systems to choose from, custom metallics, neat coats, inlaid emblems, and much more. Whether it's your home, garage, man cave, pool deck, sidewalks, porches, or carport, let us help you make it gorgeous, safe, colorful, and skid resistant. Call Daryl Hutto at 912-381-9037 or Cody Carter at 912-592-5493 or message them on Facebook. EP American Footwear in Hazelhurst is proud to be a part of the Hazelhurst Jeff Davis community and are proud sponsors of all of Jeff Davis County sports. If you're looking for a great job with a great company, they are hiring for all shifts. You can apply in person Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 at 10 North Hill Street in Hazelhurst. Go Jackets from all the folks at EP American Footwear of Hazelhurst. Go Jackets! Run a little zone with someone at the free throw line. Trying to work a block player too now though. Great job, Jeff Davis on defense. Hands up, contending every pass. Making them have to keep it out wide. Could have been a moving screen right there, but. Out of bounds, we'll stay with the Rebels. 48-31 as we start the third period, fourth period. They tried to get a cheap one right there quick. Once again, Amari's length causing issues. There he is with the good look from Malachi Smith. Amari Jackson. Big two. man ran the floor well. Was rewarded. Ball to the wing, looking down low in the corner. Kicking out wide length. Amari does a great job not jumping and potentially fouling right there. Good rebound from J.J. Benjamin. 3v1. But like he's done all night, finds a way to get out of it. Almost with a turnover down in the corner. And couldn't control it out from going out of bounds. That'll stay with the Jackets with 6.58 remaining in the game. Jeff Davis trying to get up, get that big first region win here. This will be their second win of the season. Bobby with the inbounds to Malachi. Malachi slowing it down. Jackets need to take a lot of shot clock each possession. Up big right here. Bobby getting it back to Malachi up top. Swinging it to Monte. This is where those tough non-region games we played earlier will come to pay off as the Jackets 
taking a big lead here. Got to be smart for on the shot clock. JJ taking all the clock. It resets were good right there. Malachi, those are two great looks from mm -hmm. Malachi and JJ, just not rewarded by it. That's a charge. Absolutely. Good job there. Malachi Smith getting the charge call. Great job by him setting his feet outside the basket. Otis White just picked up his third personal. 6-18 in the ball game. The Jackets up by 19. Good pass underneath. Baird with a quick out. Driving down. Got a two-on-one fast break. Jackets turn them away. Here we go the other way. J.J. on the drive. Throws it up. No good off the rim. Bobby Jones with the rebound. It's to Mari. Mari high off the backboard and good bit. He just muscled that one up there. Having a great nine on offense and defense is Amari Jackson. Ten points in the game now for Amari Jackson. He'll step to the line for the and one. 550 remaining in the contest. Off the back iron, but we get the rebound underneath. Shot is no good. Controlled by Berrien. 52-31. Jackets lead by 21. Good job by Bobby stopping the ball. Berrien resets the offense. Jackets stay in that 2-3 zone. Blocked by Amari. Took it right off his fingertips and gets it to J.J. J.J. pushing it up the court. Amari finally getting rewarded with a block. Bobby Jones on the drive underneath. In and out, no good. Amari underneath with a shot up and in and good. He picks up another foul. They called him for traveling. I oh, think, my goodness. One. Tough break. He did shuffle his feet. I hope they didn't see it, but they did. 52-31. 5-15 remaining in the game. Three-point attempt from the Rebels. That's high. For that, hits the guy wire, and that'll turn over will go to the Jackets. 5.08 remaining. Malachi Smith running the point up top. Swings it far side. Get it to Amari. Down low. Tries to get it inside. Lamonte. Lamonte fights for it and gets control. Stolen by the Rebels. They're going to get an uncontested fast break as White lays it up and in. No matter if you're up big or not, yep. you got to have the effort and and fight for those and get back on defense. Time out on the floor. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network. Experience a better way to bank at Interstate Credit Union in Hazelhurst, where they offer a wide variety of loans. Interstate Credit Union is second to none when it comes to low rates and great customer service, specializing in personal loans, new home and construction loans, and automobile loans, as well as many other types. Their broad services include personal checking, savings, business, in-person, online, and mobile banking, and much, much more. Visit them at 14 Henson Street or call 912-375-0640, or you can contact them online at interstatecu.org. 444 remaining Jackets, 52, Rebels, 33. Jeff Davis is inbound in the backcourt. Almost stolen by the Rebels. Well, they're going full court pressure now. Caden Walker with almost down, no, almost another steal, and it is going to be a turnover to the Rebels because they've come quick with the pressure, and we're late getting breaking to meet the basketball. Barron's taken all length out of the game, just a bunch of skill kids in. Three-pointer from the corner is good by K.J. Jackson. Jackets break the press, get it down for Malachi, three-pointer, a little bit long, but followed up on the far side by B Bobby Jones. He puts it back. He's got seven in the game, 54-36. Great job, Bobby, being where he's supposed to be right there on the back side of that shot. Approaching the four-minute mark in the game. Pass inside. Kick it back out, far corner. Working around the perimeter, long three-pointer. He nailed it. Josiah Davis with the big three. He's got 16 and a timeout on the floor. Let's take another 30-second break here on the Jeff Davis Hospital Sports Network.
At Jeff Davis Hospital in Hazelhurst, we are committed to building a healthy community. We use the latest technology and our knowledgeable team members provide exceptional state-of-the-art care to our local community and surrounding areas. We provide a respectful understanding of care for our patients and their loved ones. For more information about Jeff Davis Hospital and the services we provide, call 912-375-7781 or visit us online at jeffdavishospital.org. Dr. Kirkman Syak and his health care professionals at the Jeff Davis Walk-In Clinic care about Back here in action, Jackets had the ball stolen at midcourt. Bearing on the drive. Around the rim, no good. Bobby Jones controlling the rebound. He's tied up. We're going to get a foul call. This is what we talked about in pregame, those mm -hmm. early games. We've been up late in some of them. They've been really close, and we've given them away, and we've got back-to-back -back threes and two straight turnovers on two possessions from us right here. K.J. Jackson picks up his second foul. Jackets again inbound against the press. Bobby Jones breaks it, pushing it down full quickly with numbers. Coast-to-coast coast up and lays it up. No good. Rebound underneath by the Jackets, and we're going to get a reach-in foul on the Rebels. That will be their fourth team foul. Up big right there, no need to dribble drive in. You can pull it out once you break the press and run some time off the shot clock. Jackson picks up his third. Inbounds under the basket. Good, Take it up top to Malachi. Malachi will reset the offense. Got to run some clock here. 15 on the shot clock. J.J. working up top against pressure. Watch that arm being extended. And over and back call. As J.J. basically just lost the handle on it on the dribble. Was expecting someone to come help him and was late getting there. 3.13 remaining. Drive through the lane. Pull-up jumper is short. Rebound by Bobby Jones. Good. Slow it down, Malachi. He's Malachi. Under pressure, gets it across his timeline. Now we're going to try to reset the offense. Gets it to Bobby. Bobby takes it on the dribble, pulls it back up, pushes down the lane, passes down low to the baseline, back up top to Malachi. 12 on the shot clock. Malachi drives the lane, pulls it back out. J.J. from long distance, no good. Here come the Rebels the other way, trailing by 15. Great ball movement that last possession with a good shot. Long three-pointer off the front iron, but long rebound controlled by the Rebels. Loads up again. This time another three from the top of the key. No good. Rebound by the Jackets, and J.J. Benjamin gets it, pushing it quickly the other way against pressure. Takes it inside to Amari. Amari lost the handle and going to get a travel call as he just couldn't get the handle on it. Had a chance to probably put a point blank shot up but just never got secure the ball 210 remaining 54 39 jackets still with a double digit lead but Barron's not going away they're fighting and clawing on every possession to try to get their way back in this thing they're definitely widening out the three <laughs> the three point shots right here they're coming from distance three pointer near side short Rebound, out of bounds, is going to go to the Jackets with a minute 50 left. Get bailed out right there. Lamonte mm. left after the three. Almost fell right back to Berrien's hands. Lucky he couldn't handle it. Again, Rebels pressure full court. Jackets going to have to get the ball in under pressure. They're going pressure man to man. Almost stepped over the line. J.J. Benjamin gets it and going to get travel called as he goes down. And... Another possession for the Rebels, a minute 48 left. That clock just don't seem to run very fast now. Nah, full court's giving us troubles right here. Mm -hmm. And late, we're falling apart a little bit, trying to, we got to set some screens and get some guys open. Driving the lane, lays it up, no good. Rebound underneath, tied up ball. Possession arrow favors the Jackets with a minute 41 to go. Jeff Davis in the next foul will put them in the bonus. Coach Johnson calling a set play right here in this press. Get it inbounded quickly. Up court. Get a foul called up top. Malachi, and he should go to the line now. 
with the bonus. They're saying that's his fifth right there. That would be Otis White's fifth, and he's out of the game. So 135 remaining. Jackets lead it 54-39, 15-point lead. Malachi Smith with a chance to hopefully put this thing on ice here if he'll make both of the shots here. Jackets pull everybody back on defense. He nails the first one. He's got seven on the night. These are big right here under two minutes. They got us above 50% for the night with that make. And that one and puts that us one right back at it. 55-39. <laughs> Bearing on the attack. they will be launching threes now. Got it way up top. Going to get a hand check foul on the Jackets. You don't want to stop the clock. Quick whistle right there on that one. J.J. Benjamin picks up his first foul. Just a little reach. Minute 23 remaining. Jackets up 16. Don't need to leave our feet on contestant threes. Don't need to give up three. High off the glass. Free throws. By Zach Davis. He's got nine in the game. Minute 14 is the Jackets. Push the ball up court. Bobby Jones drops it back out to Malachi. Good, slow it down. Well, Bobby Jones being the senior telling the guys to slow it down right here. Working the clock. J.J. has it up top. Gets it to Malachi. Under a minute to play. 15 on the shot clock. Malachi penetrates. Pulls up. Turns out. Gets it to Bobby Jones up top. Three-pointer on the run. Off the rim. No good. Good look there by Bobby Jones. 45 seconds remaining. Here comes Barry and on the attack. Kicks it back out. Step back three attempt, but he pulls it up. as a good defense there by Bobby Jones to keep him from making the shot. Clock valuable seconds ticking away for Berrien as Jackets continue to pressure on defense. They get in inside, turn around jumper by Josiah Davis. That's fine. Gives him 18 on the night. Let it run. Worked, the, worked a lot of time off the clock. The Jackets have it stolen underneath. Shot is up and good by DeMar Riley. And we're going to get a timeout on the floor with 15 seconds left here. The Jackets lead it 55-46. Well, Coach, it's been a good night for the Jackets. And uh, going to come away from here with a big region win to go 1-0 in the region play. It's, it's huge to get the first one now. That's what we said earlier. These scores weren't really indicative of how the season has gone for these guys. The boys have played a bunch of tough opponents as the year's gone on, preparing them for this region matchup coming in. We look like the longer team, and we're able to execute early, get us a lead. Um, great job right here. We can close it out last 15 seconds and get that region win. We got out quickly, took an 11-point lead at the first break, and have just managed to keep pushing it from there. Malachi so, Smith with two huge threes to start the game. That's right. The corner got us going. The offense started rocking. Jackets will inbound underneath the bearing basket with 15 seconds remaining. They're pressing full court. Jackets get up, break the press. Bobby Jones has it up. Now you just want to let the clock run. Yep. Goes off his stolen toe. from behind by Barry, and they're going to get a breakaway and laid it up. That's fine. He's going to let the clock run right there on that one. And that'll run the clock out, and the Jackets are going to take that first region win. Your final score, Jeff Davis, 55. Berrien County 47 leading scorer tonight for the Jackets was J.J. Benjamin with 14. Amari Jackson also contributed 10. And Bobby Jones with 7. Malachi Smith with 6. Actually, he also had 70 of those two big three-pointers yep. early. Coach, has been a great win here. No doubt. The stat column finally. Amari got some baskets late, but mm -hmm. his length the whole night, he didn't block a lot of shots, but contested it inside. was trouble for Barry, and, um, which resulted in us being able to get some early rebounds. And you can tell that we are now starting to get into full flow. The offense, offense looked good, moving mm -hmm. the ball around. We jumped in a bunch of different things throughout the night. Yep. Coach Johnson had a great game plan with the 1-2-2, little quarter court out right there. Gave him fits the whole night. Our next broadcast will be Tuesday back here at home against the Worth County Rams. Coach Lawson and Coach Connor uh, Ray are going to bring that one to you, and we'll be anxious to hear you. So that's going to do it here tonight for Coach Lawson from Mr. Riles and his excellent crew 
uh, working us on the, the cameras and the, the computers in the back, doing a great job on the live streaming. This is Jim Sewell. Good night, everybody.